Senator David Pocock has submitted a proposal under Standing Order 75 today, which has been circulated. Can I just ask senators to move out of the chamber quietly, please? Senator David Pocock has submitted a proposal under Standing Order 75 today, which has been circulated and is shown on the dynamic red. Is the proposal supported? Uh, I remind senators you, you have to be in your own seats. The proposal is supported. And I understand that times have been organised. So, Senator Pocock David, you have the call. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Do I have to move the motion? Sorry. Sorry? Do I move the motion or just. No, you're just, you're just speaking to it now. Okay. Well, thank you. Apologies. We've recently seen uh, almost 2,300 medical professionals write an open letter to the Prime Minister of Australia raising concerns about a project that is receiving $1.5 billion of taxpayer money. These are people who work in communities across the country on the front line, seeing uh, people who need care and support who at times uh, are in life or death situations. They live by the principle of doing no harm. And what they are asking the government to do is to think about that and to commit to doing no harm when it comes to public funding for middle arm. These doctors and a number of scientists who have spent uh, years, some decades, looking at the health impacts on communities living uh, next to precincts such as Middle Arm tell us that the health risks are significant. People living near oil and gas operations experience high hospitalisation rates for heart disease and respiratory disease, high hospitalisation rates for neurological disorders and existing asthma conditions, increases in some childhood cancers, particularly leukaemia, increases in immune deficiency disorders, and reduced life expectancy. A new petro petrochemical hub will put further strain on the already struggling North Northern Territory health system. We've heard that directly from people working in the hospital in Darwin, from paediatricians who are struggling to keep up with demand. Territorians ex experience the, the highest rates of chronic diseases in the country. And this is a huge burden on the health system. And $1.5 billion of public money will enable projects that we know will make that worse. It seems negligent to add health impacts of petrochemical production to a health system that is already under acute, enduring stress. And it gets worse when we talk about middle arm. We'll hear from the government that this is not just uh, gas, but we know that it does unlock the Beedaloo. It unlocks Barossa, two enormous uh, gas deposits. The impacts of middle arm uh, on our climate are huge. We, we know the centrepiece of the middle arm precinct is a 6.6 .6 million tonnes per annum LNG export facility, a facility operated by Tamburan, the same company that plans to frack the Beedaloo Basin. We know that it will unlock huge quantities of gas for export. And this is being enabled by taxpayer funding. This sort of spending against the backdrop of almost 2,300 doctors raising their concerns 
of scientists who have studied this saying this will lead to increased leukemia rates in children by, by up to 30 percent. The health impact assessment on people living in the Beedaloo Basin says it will likely have all of these adverse effects but the populations are low so we may never know. This is what this government is committing to and the Senate should have the opportunity to look into this further, to provide more scrutiny, to be able to uh, examine the claims that have been made uh, about this proposed development, for and against. There is no good excuse for the government to continue to vote against an inquiry, to continue to vote against more Senate scrutiny for $1.5 billion that will ha have real health and climate impacts. Thank you, Senator. Senator Chisholm. Um, thank you, Acting Deputy President. And the government will not be supporting this proposal from Senator Pocock today. And I note that this is the Senate has considered that basically the same question yesterday in a motion from Senator Hanson Young. And as Senator Pocock would know, the Senate opposed the establishment of inquiry into this matter yesterday. Bringing the same question to the Senate not even 24 hours later is disappointing. Uh, and it's an attempt by Senator Pocock to place politics on this issue uh, that actually just delays the consideration of important legislation that is before the Senate this afternoon. Prior to the election last year, we made a commitment that an Albanese Labor government would invest $1.5 billion into the Middle Arm Precinct and an additional $440 million into regional logistic hubs along key transport links that connect to Darwin at Catherine, Alice Springs and Tennant Creek. Our, our commitment to this investment was clear and we intend on delivering it. Um, I have twice this year um, visited Alice Springs and Darwin and I know firsthand how excited those communities are about the potential jobs that can be created uh, through these investments. Uh, they understand that for the Territory to become a thriving and consistent economic success story that you need to develop new industry. Um, they don't want to be reliant on government funding as they are now. They actually want to become an attractive place for people to come live, stay and work uh, and build long-term careers for themselves and their children in the Northern Territory. Um, these investments are about creating economic opportunity and diversifying the economy, and that will be felt throughout the Northern Territory, um, not only in Darwin, uh, where the Middle Arm Precinct is, but also throughout the regional communities as well. And that, for me, is the exciting part, because there are really exciting opportunities in that part of the world. Uh, I was in Tennant Creek a couple of months ago, uh, and I met with people there who are excited about the potential of uh, renewable energy and what it can provide, uh, and also the support that can be made uh, through Middle Arm as well. So it is very clear to me that, there, that this investment uh, will be one that creates a good economic opportunity uh, for the Northern Territory. Uh, it creates jobs of the future for the Northern Territory and it's part of an Al Albanese government that shares a vision for Northern Australia uh, that we know that it can play a significant role uh, in the net zero economy of the future. And that's what this Middle Arm project is all about. Um, that's what it will deliver for the Northern Territory uh, and that's why we are proud to be a government that is supporting it. Um, it's also important, though, that we set the right parameters for those investing in infrastructure. And that will support businesses and give all potential users in the market the opportunity to grow and thrive. The proposed projects linked to Middle Arm include the development of a hydrogen facility using solar energy to produce green hydrogen and critical minerals. Processing that will support the manufacture and export of lithium batteries. Uh, this investment will pave the way for Middle Arm to be globally competitive and sustainable to be a globally competitive and sustainable precinct and provide significant economic benefits and sustainable jobs. These projects are estimated to create 20,000 jobs in the Northern Territory, jobs of the future in long-term sustainable in industries and jobs that, will, uh, that, that people can rely on to build a long-term future for themselves and their families. As I mentioned before, this investment will also help drive Australia's future net zero economy by supporting industries to export clean energy that is critical to meeting our net zero commitments, not just green hydrogen, but also the manufacture and export of lithium batteries that are critical to global energy transition and decarbonisation. Uh, 
I was also, last time I was in Darwin a couple of weeks ago, I, was, I went and spoke at the Northern Australia Conference. And there was a significant focus at that conference in Darwin about the opportunity that renewable energy uh, will provide for North, uh, the Northern Australia, uh, but also the Northern Territory in particular. And it is clear to me that the direction of the federal government and our aims uh, to meet net zero in this country and the work that we are doing it um, will work so well with the opportunities that are available for us in Northern Australia. So it is a good investment that the government is making. Uh, it is one that we are absolutely determined to deliver on. Uh, and we are proud to partner with the Northern Territory Government because we know that for all of the country to benefit, uh, we need jobs in the far north as well. Uh, and that is what the Albanese Government is so passionate about. Uh, we want these jobs um, spread around the country, creating new economic opportunity and providing the jobs of the future. Um, Northern Territory need those jobs, as do all other states uh, and territories around the country, and we are proud to be a government that is supporting them. Thank you, them. Senator. Senator Canavan. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. Um, uh, look, I note uh, this, uh, this motion calls for a Senate inquiry into the middle arm development, and uh, I think it's important, though, that the Senate notes that there was just a Senate inquiry into uh, these matters. There was an inquiry into the development of the Beedaloo Basin and the middle arm development that uh, did begin in the previous parliament, but it did did not finish until we came back until after the election. There were actually some subsequent public hearings um, in that committee after the last election. So I'm just not sure that there needs to be another, another Senate committee uh, so soon into this. Uh, it's also more broadly uh, a development that's been looked at so many times uh, by both the Northern Territory Government and federal governments. Uh, there were, there were uh, at one stage, there were six separate uh, Northern Territory Government inquiries over seven years into the Beedaloo Basin and the development of the Dar associated development of the Darwin Port. Uh, there was a moratorium for a number of years uh, through that process. All of those inquiries came back and said, yes, uh, these, these things, this development, this gas development, uh, the development of the Darwin Port can happen, can occur safely uh, while we protect the environment. There were a number of regulatory changes made uh, in light of those inquiries, the most recent one, the Pepper uh, inquiry. And I think it's just about time now we, we let the Northern Territory Government and the Federal Government, with their support, get on with the job, given how many inquiries that have been done. Clearly, clearly the, the move of this motion, Senator Pocock, does not support our development. I might get some time to uh, say why I disagree with his judgment, but I would also note at the start of this that um, we perhaps should look at what the Northern Territory people want uh, for this development. I know Senator Pocock is a very strong defender of territory rights. And as I said, there's been a number of reviews by the Northern Territory Government. There's been a number of elections where this issue has been fought over and, and been an element of controversy. And time and time again, the Northern Territory people have elected governments in the Northern Territory that support the development of the Beedaloo Basin and the development of uh, Middle Arm. Uh, and so we should ultimately at some point respect that. I realise uh, Senator Pocock has got questions, others have got questions about uh, the investment from the federal government uh, in this development, the $1.5 billion that both is supported by both the Coalition and the Labor Party. However, you know, we, we do invest in different states and territories all the time. We've invested billions in the, uh, in the ACT light rail uh, system, for example, here. Uh, and I believe the ACT government is probably coming back for more uh, for its extension as well. And, and so if it's good enough for us to, ex to, to invest billions in ACT infrastructure, surely it is good enough to make some investments for Darwin as well. Which brings me to why this investment is needed, why we should do this for our nation, but also especially for the territory. I've spent a lot of time in Darwin over uh, my career here in the Senate. I was the Minister for Northern Australia for a number of years. It's a wonderful place, beautiful people, uh, uh, and it's kind of in the right place at the right time. It should be. If we take the opportunities, it's in the right place at the right time. Uh, it's an Asian-facing port with massive demand uh, coming out of that region. It's, uh, it's the closest location we have uh, to Indonesia, an enormous uh, uh, economy that's growing very strongly. It has great links with that country and other nations in Southeast Asia. We really should be investing in Darwin if we're serious about participating in this Asian century. The one thing Darwin has lacked over its development and still lacks is access to uh, reliable and cheap energy. Uh, it hasn't traditionally had a large-scale source of energy and that has somewhat uh, restricted its development into manufacturing and therefore restricted the development of its port. Without a strong manufacturing sector, without a lot of exports, uh, it, it has meant that its port, a great natural port, uh, has not developed to the extent it possibly could. Uh, and this, this opportunity through the Beedaloo Basin, other gas developments, the middle arm development, offers that opportunity to massively expand 
uh, the, the manufacturing industry in Darwin, help our nation, help our nation make more things is what we should be focused on post-COVID. I do want to say one thing while I still have time though on the development. I am concerned that uh, the government's approach here though, might unintentionally sabotage this development. I'm not questioning that uh, Senator Chisholm and his colleagues want this development to happen, but I see now, I hear from their language that they don't want to talk about gas. They don't want to talk about uh, the use of petrochemicals, the development of those, that industry, because they're worried about their threat from their left wing and the Greens. I mean, all I hear now is hydrogen. And hydrogen is unproven. There's no mass-scale, large-scale export of hydrogen anywhere in the world. And so maybe it will happen. Maybe, maybe it will take off. But if hydrogen doesn't come off or doesn't work, I worry that the government's uh, blind, blinded approach uh, to, to the real opportunities there in gas uh, might uh, mean this whole thing doesn't proceed as it could when there is so much demand uh, through South East Asia for petrochemical products, not just uh, natural gas itself, uh, but the products that come from that that make so much of what we use, glues, plastics, or pretty much everything, and all the COVID stuff, the masks, all that came from petrochemicals. So we should support this development of Darwin. It's great for our nation, and it's time Thank just to get you, on with Senator, it. Senator, your time has expired. Senator Wright. Thanks, um, Acting Deputy President. I want to thank Senator David Pocock for bringing this matter of public importance before the Senate today. And indeed, as the government mentioned, it is very similar to a matter of public importance we discussed yesterday. And I think it is worth talking about this today, yesterday, tomorrow, ongoing, day after day after day after day, because the significance of this development is extraordinary. And you listen to the government's greenwash, their spin, basically saying this is going to be a wonderful precinct, it's all going to be focused on renewable energy, all on hydrogen, it's all about great jobs. What they don't want to talk about is the fact that the middle arm development is all about having a conduit, having the, an industrial precinct to be, to be working with the Beetaloo Basin, to be working with the massive fracking of the Beetaloo, the massive climate bomb that is the Beetaloo Basin. That's why we, this proposal is there, to be setting up this middle arm precinct, which is a 1,500 kilometre um, precinct three kilometres from the outskirts of Darwin and involving massive petrochemical development. Three kilometres from the outskirts of Darwin, very close to residential areas. I grew up in Altona next to an oil refinery and I know what the impact of living next to an oil, a petrochemical development is. But the government's saying, no, 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 don't worry about that. Don't you worry about that. This is all about renewable energy. Well, if the government was serious about that, they could rule out having gas being processed at middle arm. They could say, yep, this is a renewable energy precinct. We are going to be having renewables. We are going to be having hydrogen. It might be a precinct for be facilitating so the underwater cable to be getting renewable electricity into Southeast Asia. These are the sort of things that could be. But we know that it is associated with the Beetaloo Basin, and the Beetaloo Basin is a carbon bomb. It is a massive development. It, it will result in massive carbon pollution that the world just cannot afford. I just do not understand what part of the climate crisis that this government, along with the, the Liberal Party and the National Party, just don't understand. Don't they understand that a month ago the world had the hottest days on, on, that had been experienced on this planet for 100,000 years. Don't they understand the extent of the fires that are currently burning in the Northern Hemisphere, the 1,000 fires that are currently burning in Canada, primarily on First Nations land? Don't they understand the fact that we have just had record low sea ice extent? We are heading for a disaster. We are in a train travelling at 300 kilometres an hour about to go over a broken bridge. There is catastrophe on its way unless we stop the, burning, the mining and the burning of coal and gas and oil. The last thing that Australia needs to be doing, the last thing the world needs, is a massive new fossil fuel development like the Beetaloo Basin. And that being facilitated by one and a half billion dollars of public money. It is just extraordinary. Anybody that listens to the science, anybody that understands the seriousness of the crisis would say, 
we should not be developing new coal and gas. And in fact, we've got the UN Secretary General telling us that we have got global boiling going on. We have got people who know about the climate crisis pleading with Australia and other countries to not develop new fossil fuel developments. And yet, here we've got a government that is blithely ignoring that, heading us on that runaway train across that broken, uh, heading over a cliff. It is absolutely extraordinary. And this is the reason that we need to keep talking about this. This is the reason that, yes, we do need to have a Senate inquiry into middle arm. This inquiry was, in fact, agreed to by the Labor Party in the, um, during the separate Senate inquiry into, the, into oil and gas exploration production in the Beetaloo Basin. The government agreed to it then. So these are the sort of things that need to be explored in a Senate inquiry to see why Australia thinks that it can be so far off track and away from the direction that we need to be heading if we're going to have a safe climate for our, for our kids and a safe climate for us now. It is an extraordinary thing to be proposing and the Greens will continue to want to talk about it until it is stopped. Senator Thorpe. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I will be reading out a statement by Larakia man Eric Fijo. Hello everyone, my name is Eric Fijo. I am Larakia. I have authorised Senator Lydia Napuljari Thorpe to read my statement. I want to thank those people who have supported the Larakia people and who have supported the protection of Australia's natural and cultural heritage. There are good people to have stuck their necks out to protect Larakia country and to protect Australia's heritage. A special shout out to the Knitting Nanas, the Darwin people who have campaigned to protect Lee Point, especially the 11 people arrested at Lee Point for blocking the bulldozers, and the countrymen from North East Arnhem Land who supported Larrakia in protecting Lee Point. The city of Darwin sits over the traditional country of Larrakia people. Today, Larrakia country is under threat by the federal government, the Northern Territory government and a consortium of private capital. Against the interests of the Larrakia people, the federal government, the federal Labor government, mind you, are involved in a housing development on traditional Larrakia land at Lee Point for defence housing. And they have partnered with the Northern Territory government and a private consortium to develop a liquefied gas and petrochemical plant at Middle Arm. They have not recognised or respected Larrakia people, nor have they protected the natural environment, and they have not genuinely engaged with Larrakia people over these developments. 22 years ago, when I was experiencing some tough challenges in my life, my mother wrote some beautiful words encouraging me to fight and not quit, because even though the road is hard, success will come if you stick to the fight. Our mothers provide nourishment and they nurture, support and protect us. Our mothers do so much more for us. Our strength comes from our mothers. Larrakia country also provides nourishment and it nurtures, protects and gives me strength. The land is like my mother. When things get tough, I take time out to listen to my country. It re-energises me. It gives me life. Larrakia country is a living ecosystem because if you listen closely to country, the sound of the wind, the waves of the ocean, the trees and the animals, you will hear what the country is saying. If you hear the country, you, then you will understand that people in the natural environment are all organic, a living, breathing entity, all connected. Every form of life has a worth and a place in the ecosystem. We Australians must have an allegiance to the land, its ecosystems and the culture that runs through the land. Our natural and cultural heritage is the essence of who we are as a people. If we continue to destroy our heritage, then we are nobody and we achieve nothing. 
My mother is no longer with us, but I hear her words in the struggle to protect Larrakia cultural heritage and Larrakia country. It is, hard, it is a hard road. However, I, along with all of you, have a great responsibility and obligation to prevent environmental harm and to protect the rights of country, people and communities. We must live ecologically responsible and sustainable lives. We must protect the life support systems of the earth, maintain biodiversity and preserve our national heritage. We must prevent toxic or hazardous substances, including gases such as carbon dioxide. These gases and toxic substances destroy our land and waters and affect our health and well-being. We must ensure that government and industry prevent the long-term and indirect consequences of environmental harm, including harm to our culture, health and well-being. They are responsible for the damage to our environment and to our health and well-being, and we must hold them to account. Why are governments and industry not able to protect our cultural and natural heritage? Why does Australia still rely on industrial development that destroys cultural and natural heritage? Why can't we create alternative industries that protect the natural environment, the cultural heritage and the well-being of people? Senator Cox. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I rise to speak in support of this MPI put forward by Senator David Pocock. Now, it was absolutely shameful to see this government not just once but twice vote down an inquiry into middle arm. And it begs the question, what have they got to hide? What are they hiding over there? Now, we know that this is a dirty petrochemical hub. We know that it will be a place um, that currently holds the ancient petroglyphs and the only known remaining rock art in the Darwin area and put it at risk. Um, we know that it will increase the Northern Territory's uh, carbon emissions and we know that it will be a gas export terminal for gas uh, for the Beedaloo and Barossa gas fields. We also know that the government is aware of all of this and completely being ignorant to it all. So what else is this government hiding that they're so scared of uh, the Senate doing its job? And when, in fact, of course, it's the Senate is the chamber of scrutiny, after all. Um, this project does not stack up. It doesn't stack up on the health front. It doesn't, certainly doesn't st stack up in the, uh, on the front of cultural heritage protection. It doesn't stack up on environmental or climate front. And we have some serious doubts that it will, in fact, stack up on the economic front. $1.5 billion of taxpayer money has been put aside for this project, and the government wants to do this without any scrutiny. That's the laughable joke in this. So without an opportunity for the Senate to ask any questions to the traditional owners, to the parents, to the doctors, for anybody, in fact, that has issue with middle arm. Um, and, and in fact, I, I met with the parents of Climate Action this morning who told me of many things that they heard from politicians in this place in the meetings. It's, uh, would absolutely turn your hair white. Um, and it's the sheer hypocrisy, because we expect that from the other side. For a decade, people have expected that. They've become attuned to that. When they come in this place and they talk to other MPs and other politicians who are now in government, who in opposition say things like, oh, yeah, of course, we'll change that, and then don't, they are surprised. They are dumbfounded. But guess what? The mirage that they have built is cracking. People are starting to see their true colours of this government, and people are absolutely not liking what they see, and they see greenwashing, lies, and absolute ignorance. They are seeing a government saying climate wars are over, whilst they're destroying our cultural heritage and knowingly set off all of these carbon bombs in our communities, and it's absolutely disgraceful. Senior Larrakia people have said that this artwork that exists right in the heart of Darwin is priceless for their mob and should be considered priceless and, in fact, part of Australia's history, as I said last night in my speech. Um, both the Northern Territory and the federal governments have failed to even follow any of the cultural protocols that they claim to have at a state level and a federal level in relation to consultation with our Larrakia people. Now, I said this last night when I spoke to the motion um, to establish this inquiry that Labor, again, sat alongside the opposition and voted down. 
But this is a vital point. And what we are seeing is this happen on the back of the Duke and Gorge disaster. We watched on with absolute shock and heartbreak the images of the sacred sites that were caved in and blown up, in fact, caused worldwide um, outrage at um, how such a tragic event could take place. But secondly, how could this be legal for it to be destroyed? And I was a member of that Northern Australian Committee that did those two reports, um, the first one titled Never Again and the second one um, titled uh, A Way Forward. Um, so we're at a place where we continue to see examples of industrial development, uh, including in my home state of Western Australia and the Burrup Peninsula, which I've talked about at length, um, being put to risk by industry. And in fact, people saying, oh, you know, like we're going to have to make a couple of sacrifices. Are we sacrificing our own children's health because of the economic benefit that they think is going to come from it? Because that's the stage we're at now. Um, we absolutely need to hear from traditional owners about how this project could impact on cultural heritage, their country, their environment, biodiversity. And again, we will keep talking about this issue and I thank Senator David Pocock for continuing to listen um, to those uh, voices that are being brought into this place and we will keep pursuing that. Senator Cox.